European Pro Stock Champion, champion Jimmy Allen, picks up his first ever NHRA win. This makes him the 58th different driver to win a Pro Stock race in the National Hot Rod Association. And I've been practicing this since you got here. Is it score? Is that correct? Is that close? Score now. Score. Oh, there's an L? Score now. Like gotcha. Score. What does that mean? means uh, cheers. Oh, okay. I looked it up on the internet. It just said that's what they do. Yeah. What? I have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where? <laughs> I, thought, I thought he was from Switzerland last week. <laughs> what? Let's talk a little bit about this event. That team, Greg Anderson's team, now has three wins. Two for Greg in the four wide, and now you, coming to a track where they're so comfortable, had so much success, is that extra pressure on you, or does that take some off? Actually, since I got here the very first time, I didn't feel any pressure because uh, if I, I knew if I did my best, I couldn't do much more. And uh, they're professionals, and they gave me a good race car. And uh, it took a while for us to 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 work well together. But I mean, I I pretty much think we worked well together from you know from the, you know after the first test session. So. Uh, but talking about pressure, uh, this format with the four wide, I did it one time before in 2010, and it wasn't, you know, a very nice experience back then. Now they changed the lights and the, the numbers up there, which is uh, a lot better. Plus, um, it, everybody, like like uh, Andrew said, everybody wants to go in their stage first and be ready. And that actually fits me a little bit better because over in Europe, when we race. It didn't take. It doesn't take as long as it does here for you know setting the wheelie bars and rolling in. For me, doing it what they do over here it takes forever. For me, doing it this weekend felt natural. So, so I think that helped me a little bit, maybe. Yeah. I, I always think it's interesting. You know, we saw Antron and Robert come up here, and, and of course Andrew just a moment ago. They have a stack of those trophies, so you know they get one, go rah rah, stick the thing in the truck. The last time I remember somebody bringing a trophy in the press room was when Ricky Jones became the 57th different winner in Pro Stock last year at Pomona. Tell me how special that is and what's it going to take to pry that out of your hands? <laughs> yeah, it will probably take much. Um, well, to be able to, to outrun nine cars in one day, uh, people in those cars and teams that you've been looking up to while you're racing in Europe, it's pretty awesome. What's the first thing that Greg said to you when he got to the end of the racetrack? I actually don't remember, but I remember he told me when I was in Pomona, first first race, drive it as you stole it. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm actually thinking about stealing it from him right now. <laughs> you, you made the comment earlier in the weekend that you were going broke, bribing Greg's doctor to keep telling him, no, you can't come back, you can't come back. i got to believe that you're willing now to spend even a little more money. Yeah, I can spend some more though. <laughs> I want one more thing and I'll turn it over to everybody, but I'm curious, you knew coming in here you had a limited number of shots with the team that's as strong as they are to get that Wally. Was it weighing on you at all that your opportunities were running out and you might have to face going home without one? Yeah, it was because the first, I mean, if we go back in time and, and look at Pomona, uh, I had a red light with 14,000s, which I didn't even know I red light, let's put it that way. And uh, you can live with that. And I also lost to get Alan Johnson at the finish line with 9,000s in Phoenix. I can live with that as well. What I can't live with it is what happened in Gainesville, especially since we were, I was running Jason, and it was, a, you know, people over all over the world sometimes might think it was a team order. And I think we proved that in Vegas and over here that there's no team orders in this camp. So, uh, um, to answer your question, I, yeah, I was actually running out of opportunities, so I better grab this one, ain't I? Have you heard from anybody at home yet? Well, I got, I haven't been back at the, at the trailer, but my phones are there, so they said that one of them was going crazy, so I don't know. <laughs> I can only imagine. Bobby, go ahead. Bobby Bennett, Competition Plus. I believe that you're the very first international pro stock winner in the NHRA pro stock history. What does that mean to you to have that title? Well, I don't know. It means a lot. Uh, I haven't. It really haven't sunk in yet. Let's put it that way. Uh, I have a lot of wins in, in Europe, but this is something special. So, yeah, I don't know. The rest of the drag racing world got to tell me that.
what it's worth. I don't know. What? How hard is it going to be for you to climb out of the seat and let Greg Anderson back in? Well, what do you think? <laughs> they just said he was going to steal it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I, like I said uh, down there, well, we need a red, white, and blue, so we got a white car in the shop, so let's let's hope somebody put it out there, and I, I'd be sure glad to drive it. I, I have one more thing. With the, it coming up on the countdown to the championship, what's your schedule like? If the offer was made, drive that car for the year and chase the championship, would you do it? You mean skip the season in Europe, uh -huh. or could you work around? I don't know what your, I don't know how much of your season overlaps and how much. Well, it, it overlaps, and uh, to be honest with you, uh, we cross that bridge if we get to that. But uh, I got sponsors over there. I got responsibilities, and but I think my sponsors over there right now, they're pretty happy. So <laughs> <laughs> I could probably stay here, yeah. But I also got a family. You can put Greg in your car. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think of that, did you? That would be something. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I like it here. Everybody's very friendly. We got a good, good group of people in pro stock and and and, and HRA in re general. So, I so far I had a great time, and this team I'm working with is awesome. I mean, we got a great group of people, and everybody's happy, and we're laughing and having fun. And I think that's that's a very key ingredient. So. And Jimmy, I, I didn't realize, maybe some people in the room um, do, but I didn't know that you were you're really commuting back and forth to work in Sweden. How is your strength? How is your stamina? I mean, are, are, are you are, are you tired? Or, or obviously not after this, but uh, what what's it been like to go back and forth uh, over multiple time zones? It's been very hectic. Uh, going to the East Coast, like I did this time, and, and to Gainesville as well, it's been okay. Going to Phoenix, Pomona, that was uh, that was tough. That was really tough for me. And I, I flew in a couple of days before the race, and, and I left on Monday morning. And then I had to work, you know, catch up at work back home. And I got a small repair shop and parts supplier store. So, so it, it was a lot of work. And, and then you catch the next airplane. After six days, you go back. and. You gotta, you know, you, you gotta be on your A game when you get here. You can't, you know, you gotta do your best. So it's been, it's been hard. Between now and Houston, I'm, I'm actually gonna stay over here in this beautiful country. How's your frequent flyer account? <laughs> they just uh, Scandinavian Airlines just gave me a gold card. <laughs> How about that? Gold in April. That's a lot. Can we get the mic? Jimmy, I just want to ask, does this send a message to, to other Europeans or maybe um, other drivers around the world that you can come over here and be successful? Yeah, you can. I mean, I got a very good friend. His name is Johnny Lindberg, and he was uh, actually in the top alcohol funny car final today. The kid is only 22, 23 years old, and he's really good on what he's doing. And we had Ulf Leanders. He was number one qualifier in Gainesville in the same class. So. I mean, I think we're doing pretty good, and uh, to come over here, run pro stock, and be competitive, I guess you got to do what I did, step out in a team that is already a professional team, and because there's a learning curve, I can tell you that. So, so, but it's uh, yeah, we we had some other success from European drivers as well, but I think this one is. I had, we had Michael Gilquist actually in Atlanta a couple of years ago. He won in in one of Roger Burgess. Camaros, and I asked Michael before I left you for the first race. I said, "Hey, how do you get a Wally in that? You know, how, how do you get a Wally with your home?" And he said, "Jimmy, just drive that Camaro straight to the finish line, and the Wally will be there waiting for you." And that's what I did today. For the record, that win would have been a pro mod in Roger Burgess. Yeah, you're right. Was, has, one, so. has there been a personal rivalry between you and Yanni Lindberg and, and and Ulf about being the first one to win one of these things? No, no, it would. I was actually, I was trapped in the car, I couldn't see Johnny's run because he was running just ahead of us, so I asked my crew guys, and they, they was on the radio with the starting line and asked, you know, who won, and they said that Johnny had to lift because of blue tire shock, so. But I'm happy to have this one in pro stock, I can tell you that. Anything else? Enjoy that one, by the way. I just want to say hi to my family back home. Absolutely. We're gonna give away another one in Houston, by the way, so. I'd be, be there. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you. Thank you.